Yo, yo, what is up here today? It is Nick here with Living Rich, and I am here with a very special gift for you today. This is one of the best books that I have read all year, and I've probably read about 30 books in all this year, and they're all super high quality, but this one tops the list. Um, and without further ado, it's right here. So this is The Full Facts of Cold Reading by Ian Rowland. And I'm just gonna start out with uh, why I like this book so much and why I think you're gonna fucking love it is because it's the, one, it's not very, it's not a very well talked about subject. Um, maybe if you're familiar with the world of selling or the world of maybe, you know, picking up girls, if you're into that, I know it's a little weird, but, uh, kind of like the seduction area, um, any, anything really with like these loosey goosey, um, rules that it's almost like a, a soft practice it's not like a science but there's methodical ways and things to go about things that all have to do with the human psyche and that's why I fucking loved this book um, it goes really really deep into the practice of cold reading by psychics uh, Ian Rowland worked as a psychic for some time and now he works as a business consultant um, teaching people how to sell and how to deal with, you know, this, I, I don't even know if it's like woo woo stuff. I just, I glanced on his website. He says he does business. He does, um, the, the, what's it called? He does corporate events. So he's a speaker basically. And I don't blame him. That's where the money's at. And, uh, <laughs> hopefully one day, you know, I'll have businesses asking me to go speak for them. That'd be fucking dope. By the way, if you're a business and you want me to come speak for you, hit me up in the contacts below and private message me. <laughs> okay, so down to the nitty gritty of the book just to give you a little idea. Um, my real goal is to get you to go out and buy it so it's not going to be too, too in depth. Uh, the book itself is, is an easy read. It's very interesting. Um, especially because it talks about things that people use in everyday life and I don't even think they know they use it. Like it's, it's very subtle mental cues and uh, com sub communications that get people to open up, to um, communicate things that they other would, otherwise would not communicate and to get people on the same page. And so uh, he's, in this book, he's talking about the, the psychic to client uh, relationship. So the, the normal standard thing he, he refers to is this environment where there's a psychic sitting down with somebody who's maybe a little bit skeptical who may not be forthcoming with information and this is kind of like the the goal is for the psychic to to do a, a reading a psychic reading where and to tell the client stuff about him or her, herself um, that she maybe would like to hear doesn't know or does know and wants to see if the psychic is really psychic so, um, a little side note here is that most of the clients are women, and he goes into a little bit of detail with this, uh, with saying that it's because culturally men are more closed off to getting advice from other people. Um, we're very macho, la -di -da -di -da -di, and women are credited culturally with having intuitive gifts that can how you say, uh, you, you can find out a person by not normal we, means or like by, by certain, you know, psychic measures. You can be intuitive. Anyways, 
getting down to an actual reading, which is a very interesting process. And it's really interesting because this is stuff that as I was reading it, I was like, wait, fuck, that would work on me. And I'm like super, super skeptical. And I've since like adjusted my view of the world because of this book um, and, and my view of people and what they say because of this book. And I can kind of see behind the veal of you know some of these expressions a little bit better and I, I hope I can like whet your appetite for this knowledge because it is epic so let's say you have a you are a psychic right the first and this is all from the book none of this is my intelligence this is all stuff I got from Ian Rowland um, and I totally want to credit this guy fucking amazing um, I've not seen him speak, just read the book, and I was totally profoundly affected, and I appreciate it. So, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through this like you're going through a psychic reading, like a light psychic reading, and do like a, you know, initial start, and then elements of it, and then win-win, and, and maybe some applications to things that aren't psychic reading. So, let's say you're a psychic, right? Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do when you have a client, and this applies to everything else too, as well as business. So, listen. Um, as well as girls too. Listen to that. Um, or maybe even guys. Yeah, definitely guys. Like if you're, if you're a girl and you're getting, you know, into, you're trying to attract a, a mate, like the, this could help you out, you know? Anyways. Um, although it's a lot easier for girls than it is for guys, I will say that. Um, the the first thing you want to do as a psychic um, is you, you have to create like a comfortable, intimate environment where the person, the client, is able to open up, and and then you have to establish first that it's a not an exact science. So you're like, okay, I'm a psychic. This is the reading of whatever, the tarot cards, or this is a reading of an astrological sign, whatever. And you, you set up that, that these, whatever it is, you know, X belief system is not an exact science. And, and in that way, you sort of initiate help and a, assistance and collaboration from the client so it's not a you know uh a, you know a pure like i tell you exactly what about you it, it ends up being and this is what the psychic does is he subtly or she here whoever the psychic is suddenly makes it and shifts it to a collaborative environment without really the the client noticing unless it's a super savvy client or a super skeptical client this usually makes the uh reading a hell of a lot, lot easier because they set out from the start that it's not an exact science you're gonna help me and i'm gonna help you understand about yourself and and uh i mean even think about selling like it's the exact same thing if you're trying to sell something like, I, I slang steaks, and I go up to a table, if I'm like, this is the steak you're gonna have, it may get some laughs, and there may be like two people who are receptive it to it, who already trust me, because of whatever, and they're like, oh, the server's right, but a lot of times, it's like, what, what kind of steaks do you like, you know, how are you feeling today? And in, in that way, I can kind of get a gauge for the caliber of person they are, how much money they're willing to spend. You know, if they're some, uh, like, if they're trying to, like, impress their friends, you'd be like, oh, yeah, this Wagyu steak, it's fucking impressive. Um, but anyways, you know, you want to make it a collaborative frame. Same thing with girls. I'm not saying that I do this. But think about it. Anyways, uh, back down to it. So you set the environment, you set the collaborative frame 
amongst you two and then you get down to the actual reading, right? And then the reading consists of these things that um, Ian Rowling calls elements. And an element is basically a statement or a veiled question um, that that is either meant to tell the person about themselves or elicit information from them in a very subtle way. Uh, so an example of these two things, we have, and oh yeah, and all of, they're, they're talking about some very specific subjects in life and uh, it's character traits, like what kind of a person are you? Um, facts about your life, who, what, when, where, how, blah, 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 blah. Um, oh yeah, these are these are the elements. Uh, extracting info, like the veal question, like a question that sounds like a statement, but at the end you're like, does that sound true? Um, predicting the future, which <laughs> you can predict whatever you want. You can predict a thousand things, and if two of those things come true, then the psychic is seen as psychic and that's and all the other things people forget because also the psychic can be like oh it has not come true yet and also even they do this thing where um it's self-fulfilling prophecy so it may be like let's say you have a you're a psychic you have a client in your place and then the client you see is kind of like on the edge of something like maybe getting a new asking for a promotion right or asking for a raise and and you can be like mm, I see in your future you will be developing the courage and bolstering yourself enough to ask for what you want and get what you deserve and then maybe the client goes out and because of that statement, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because he's like, huh, I get the courage, I ask. And, you know, he sees the psychic as having this prophetic ability and therefore elevating the status of the psychic. So, um, another interesting thing are the principal themes that, that are talked about. I will... Looking up here, it's um, it's love, so like romantic partners, um, character, travel, travel as in a journey from like one type of person to another type of person, or physical travel. Um, give me two seconds here. Also... Really, really good book. The uh, reading this was was so slow because I was I was like underlining, highlighting, um, you know, making sure all the pages were dog-eared that I wanted to return to, and like literally half the book is like dog-eared there. I don't know if you can see it, but. Okay, principal themes. Love, romance and relationships, money ma and material comforts, uh, career and progression, health and well-being, travel, education, and the pursuit of new knowledge, ambitions, hopes, and dreams. And these are the things that they talk about. And they have different elements in how they talk about these things in, in the cold reading or the, the psychic reading, whatever you want to call it. And whatever it is, really. Um, but the they talk about Barnum statements, which are basically, you know, statements that are relatively true for everybody. You know, like in astrological readings, they'll have like something like, you are a very... Actually, wait, I have, a, I have a, uh, an example here. Um... Pause, let it linger, dugga dugga. Lucky guess. There we are. 
Mm. So Barnum statements are generalized character statements which a majority of people, if asked, will consider to be a reasonably accurate description of themselves. So like, you have a strong need for people to like and respect you. Uh, you, you tend to feel you have a lot of unused capacity that you don't always give that people don't always give you full credit for your abilities Duh. some of your hopes and goals tend to be pretty unrealistic I mean depends on your perspective you are independent and an original thinker you don't just accept what people tell you to believe um, yeah yeah. Oh, no. Oh. So you can also, he goes on and continues to be like, you can also uh, put a fork in it and, and then, uh, so like, like this, like a statement, like you tend to be self, quite self-critical can be changed into you often give yourself quite a hard time over mistakes and shortcomings which perhaps other people wouldn't worry about you have a tendency to be your own worst enemy in this regard and this self-critical side to your character has held you back on more than one occasion so you you develop the idea like from self-critical to like the full statement and the implications of the statement. And then he goes on to say, um, if he, the, the, if the, the client does not agree with that statement, you don't have to develop it and you can kind of pivot. So you can say, Oh, you tend to be self-critical. And they're like, nah, no, nah, I'm not self-critical. I don't give a fuck. Then it's like, oh, but this tendency is one you've learned to overcome. And these days it rarely comes to the fore. You have learned to accept yourself and to be reconciled with your own special mix of gifts and skills. You have learned how damaging it can be to be too self-critical and credit to all... Wait, and, and all credit to you for having matured past the self-critical stage. So... This is one example that I'm going to stick with and finish with for the, the elements of the reading because there are like 40 elements. But as you can see here, he takes a statement like you are so, uh, quite self-critical. And depending on the reaction of the person, whether he has like a happy face, sad face, agreement face, whatever face, uh, he can pivot the statement to fit that person and in effect he has two options which he can go with yeah, like if the person is like oh i am very self-critical sometimes the self-critical has held you back in the future blah 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 blah, blah. you know it's stood in your way you are very hard on yourself and you kind of just keeps going on that one kind of giving the person what they want and also the same way if like no i'm not self-critical you can go like oh you've overcome this blah, 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 blah. so that you are self-critical is actually more of like a question you know or like a a test so you are self-critical no no you've learned to overcome this a while ago and now these days it rarely crops up and kudos to you for overcoming this that's it you know that's um a taste of what the book has to offer he has a lot more in depth and detail of all the different kinds of ways psychics will go about uh doing this reading and it's really really good to look at so there are times though when the psychic runs into a hard stop with a skeptic or with uh, someone who just totally doesn't agree with the statement. And besides forking, like we just talked about, where he has like the two different options, uh, there's what he, what Ian Rowlands coins the term um, win win game. And this consists of like multiple different strategies, but uh, he's like the first one is probably the most is the most effective and then the 11th one is less least effective So what I did is I just took the first one. And I'm gonna tell it to you um, 
and which is to persist, to wonder, and to let it linger. And so here's how it works. Let's say, let's say you have uh, a statement like, like, um, I'm getting the name Sarah. Now, why is that significant to you? Mm, I can't think. I don't know anyone named Sarah. Okay. So, persist. The psychic persists with the offered statement and tries to encourage at least partial agreement. So, you're like... You're quite sure you don't know anyone named Sarah? And so what does that do? It gets the person thinking a little, little harder. Her brain is searching, making the connections. Okay. The second is to act puzzled and invite the client to share the blame for dis the discrepancy. Now, how fucking weird and twisted and fucked up, blah, 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 is that? You invite the client to share the blame for your inability to be psychic, which you say you are. Well, that's just part of the game. Um, so, the third one, and <laughs> this is a really sneaky one too, is to leave the discrepancy unresolved. And again, it does the same thing that number one did where you would just persist um, and encourage partial agreement uh, it it you just let it linger you're like oh okay and you move on you um, move on in case she thinks of something later on of knowing someone named Sarah and like associating some meaningful event with someone named Sarah so that kind of concludes uh, the cold reading psychic part of it. I'd like to go into something a little more interesting, uh, which is the, which is the um, real life application of this stuff. Uh, so I mentioned earlier sales and business and girls. And for any of you fellows out there, who have ever been in a conversation with a girl ever, you, you kind of know you're up, you, you can be up against some stuff that, uh, is, is a little bit difficult to overcome. So, just real quick, because this video is getting a little long, um, let's say you create a better environment, make it a collaborative frame and uh, you make it like uh, comfortable for her to open up can you see how that could be uh, more beneficial to you than maybe being in like a a loud obnoxious club or like a you know like a crazy place or like have really really bright lights that like make them think all serious I mean there's ways around it and ways to like plow through it but you know, can you see how it benefits you? Um, also, what's the most boring thing you can do as a guy? In my opinion, it's ask the basic questions. You know, sometimes it'll it's in your favor, but a lot of times if you're like, where do you work? Okay. Where are you from? Okay. Blah, 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 blah. You just become this very flat character. Um, so, it might be, might behoove you to kind of spruce it up a little bit by reading her and seeing what you can determine and then, you know, try telling her about it. Be like, oh, you seem like, you know, you're kind of... You're kind of sweet, fun girl, but you have a <laughs> you have a naughty side. I wouldn't quite put it like that, by the way. Depending on the girl, depending on the girl. 
and that's the thing you got to read people um so how could that how could that benefit you with sales well sales is sales is sales and sales is life right so you you go into a sales situation and if you're trying to sell the guy in the wrong way, you're trying to sell the guy the wrong product because you can't open your eyes and because you can't prompt him for information because you can't get him on the same page, how do you think that's going to affect you? So in the same exact way as the girl sales thing, this all this psychic cold reading stuff is very, very pertinent. And... Um, I think I've demonstrated by now, if not by talking for 30 minutes, um, why I really, 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 really like this book, um, and how, and I hope I've given you a sort of, you know, taste, so you're hungry to go out and get this, read it, and apply it to your life. And really, that's all. Thank you for watching my channel. It is Nick here. It's a pleasure to talk to you, and I will see you again soon. Peace.